Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com. Today we're going to take a look at how to make and use fiberglass honeycomb panels. Now I recently bought a 16-foot Carolina skiff as a project boat. A bunch of little fiberglass repairs, but I wanted to make a front deck for it and I did not want to use a glass over plywood. It just becomes too heavy and historically, and no matter what you do, that, that plywood is going to eventually become wet, waterlogged, and eventually delaminate. So for this particular project, I don't, don't really want to add any wood to the project. Um, and I decided to make that front platform out of a really cool honeycomb material. Now I got this down at the local fiberglass supply house. It's very similar to a product called Nitacore, uh, but this is the generic equivalent. When you coat it with uh, fiberglass mesh on one side and biaxal on the other, it becomes very rigid. So it's very lightweight, it's not going to um, soak up any water, uh, it's not going to become heavy or delaminate. The center is these little plastic honeycombs. So even if you got water into one of those honeycombs, it's not going to migrate into any of the other ones. You are going to need some fiberglass cloth. Uh, you're going to need uh, mesh in order to laminate one side, and you're going to use biaxal, which is a combination of mesh and woven, uh, to laminate the other side. You're also going to need some fiberglass resin. Um, I used uh, Total Boat resin for this project. I stepped it up a little bit. I usually use uh, Home Depot brand. And you're also going to need a fiberglass roller. Uh, some people call this a, a bubble pusher. So the project starts. I, I took that honeycomb material and you, you can just size it or cut it with a razor knife. You could actually laminate the entire 4x8 sheet, um, but it was just easier for me to cut it into you know, more workable chunks. That 4 by 8 sheet of half inch um, honeycomb material was just about $60 and you really can't even get a piece of plywood for $60 anymore. I started by uh, mixing up some resin and I'm using a roller I just saturated one side or the cloth uh, on one side of that honeycomb panel. I'm then taking the mesh material. This is the thinner of the two sheets of, of glass, of fiberglass. I'm going to lay it right in position. Now, a trick I learned afterwards is that it would be much easier if you took that fiberglass mesh, put it on a piece of cardboard, and saturated one side, then flipped it over and put that saturated side down against the saturated uh, honeycomb material. Um, it, it just makes it easier to completely saturate the fiberglass. But in this case, it's thin enough, and with a roller um, and a little bit of effort, just go back and forth until all of those fibers are completely saturated with resin. There's nothing hard here, nothing difficult, uh, but it is a little time consuming. So after the one side dries, I flip them over, and I'm going to kind of repeat the process. And this time I'm going to coat it with the biaxal, which is a thicker fiberglass. It's got mesh on one side, it's got woven on the other. I'm going to put it mesh down. Um, again, this is much easier to get all the bubbles out and to get it to really um, adhere nicely. Uh, if you were to lay this down upside down on a piece of cardboard um, and, and uh, coat with resin uh, the mesh side first and then you know put that wet mesh uh, down against the wet foam core. I didn't do that here. <laughs> it was a trick I learned afterwards. So I'm using a roller and I'm just going to work it back and forth and I'm going to make sure that that, that um, fiberglass cloth becomes completely saturated. So this material ends up being a really cool material to work with. Uh, there are a couple of little uh, tricks uh, to learn in order to, um, you know, to handle it. Um, one of the things is that the edge, the finished edge, uh, you can't leave it exposed. And I'll show you how we deal with that in a minute. I'm going to use that fiberglass roller, and I usually push or pull towards the end, or towards the edge, so that if there is a bubble, you're going to push that bubble out, and you're also going to push out any extra or excess fiberglass resin. Then I'm going to let all of these panels dry, and then they're ready to work with. You can see here that you got the mesh on one side, the biaxal on the other, and all of a sudden I've got a, a nice stiff panel. When you're cutting this, you can cut it with a variety of different tools. You can use a circular saw, or a jigsaw, etc. Just make sure you wear a mask and eye protection. In order to finish up the edges, 
you're going to use some fiberglass uh, putty. I like the Bondo. Um, you could also use, uh, they make a bunch of different ones with the fiberglass hairs in them. Um, so if you're going to have an exposed end, you want to core out the center, leaving both fiberglass laminates on the outsides, and then fill out that, that inside with fiberglass putty. And I'm going to show you exactly how you go about doing this. One of the ways that I found that works really well is just with an um, angle grinder and a flap sanding wheel. I, I happen to have a 36 grit in there. And this removes that inside plastic core material very, very quickly. You have to be a little careful because it would, it would also go through the fiberglass pretty quickly if you let it. Another method would be to use um, you, you know, one of the vibrating saws. This is a, a Dremel multi-saw. And you can just let that blade kind of travel right along uh, one wall of the glass. And then you come, kind of come in at an angle and chop out the inside. Either way you do it, or any way that you do it, you want to then take that groove that you've created and fill it in with fiberglass putty. After that putty dries, you have to sand it off, and at that point, you can um, you know, round over the edges if you're going to lay uh, fiberglass uh, over that, or you know, to use it to attach to another, another structure, uh, or you could just leave the putty as, as the finish. If you're going to do a corner, you can just core away the inside and one of the laminates, leaving one of the laminates, uh, which is actually going to be the roof on the other one, on the other side. So the vertical you would just place right against it, and you could use fiberglass putty on that inside corner, and I'll show you in a minute how we do that. I do it with a, um, this is a paint stirrer, but it's a popsicle stick type paint stirrer. It's got a, a curve on the end, so it leaves a nice radius. Uh, in that fiberglass putty and makes it very easy to then run fiberglass and resin over it. The outside corner, um, again, if you're going to glass over that, and most times you are, you want to round that over a little bit. So you need some putty on that other, you know, in the inside core of that other panel. If you're going to do a T-joint, you can just core out a groove on one piece and slide the vertical right into it. This is just some scrap material I had left over. I'm just demonstrating. You core out a groove, put the vertical right into it, and then you can run fiberglass putty along both of those inside uh, edges. In order to cut that groove, that multi-tool uh, really worked out nicely. You, know, you just mark out your lines. Uh, don't let the saw blade go all the way through. You're really just cutting that, that top layer of glass. And then once you, you make that cut, then you kind of make some plunge cuts in at 45 degrees or so. And you chop out that top laminate. And then you could dig out that, that inside, whatever's remaining on the inside, either with the angle grinder or with that multi-tool. And I'm really just trying to show you, you know, what what the possibilities are, what you have to do in order to really utilize this stuff. If you have two sheets that you want to put together, um, core, core them out as shown. You're, you're really going to just remove the core and one side on one sheet, and you're going to remove just the one side on the other. So here I've just removed just the laminate from one side of this sheet, and I've removed the core and laminate from the other side, and they're just going to slide together. And then I'll run uh, fiberglass and resin right across you know both sides of that and it really makes a nice strong bond and the last thing I want to show you and, and again I mentioned before that working with fiberglass fiberglass does not flow well over a right angle edge uh, so if you cut a wider groove uh, you can actually in a lot of applications uh, bend the glass right into that groove or you could cut a 45 and bend it into the 45. Now you're going to have to hold this into position you know with a jig and then run some some fiberglass putty and then run some glass this is puttying with that popsicle stick paint stirrer and then I would actually run some glass right up along both of those panels and that would hold it in position. For the outer edge of that I'm going to run fiberglass usually the mesh because it just you know, runs over that corner easier. And this line here is where I mesh together two panels. And 
And that's basically basically it. Uh, the basics of, of making these um, honeycomb core panels and also working with it. This particular project I'm going to cover on a, on a separate video on how to make the, uh, you know, the bow casting uh, platform uh, for a Carolina skiff. You can stay tuned for that. But this stuff is definitely worthwhile taking a look at, especially if you don't want your projects uh, delaminating over time and weighing a ton. Thank you very much for watching. I ask that you please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel. By all means, check us out on the web. I got a bunch of nautical and boat and fishing related projects, do-it-yourself stuff, um, DIYeasycraft.com. Thank you very much for watching.